Hi, it's Joanne today I'm going to watch in the Glow Wars Season 5, Episode 14, Eminence. I have no idea what this episode is going to be about. It could still be about um, Darth Maul and his brother, which is why they pieced it in here, but it also could totally be branching onto something else, so I guess we will find out. A reminder that, as always, you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon two weeks in advance, the edited version one week in advance, and let's go. Back we go. Oh lord. Why can't fate let them die? Does whoever this is know what they're in for now? Oh god. How do they know they're enemies of the Jedi? For all they know, they could be Jedi, right? When they wake up, they're injured, but you're gonna probably regret saving them. Oh lord, where is this? That moon is very close. Maybe he does care a bit. You're not Jedi. Is that Bo Katan? So what are you? What happened to your ship? Destroyed by Jedi. Actually, Jedi. pirates did the ship destroying. Our people were warriors. Strong. Feared. Now they're ruled by the new Mandalorians who think that being a pacifist is a good thing. I mean it is. They've given away our honor and tradition for peace. Less bloodshed, pain, violence. Leadership are crushing our souls. So corrupt. Destroying our identity. The Duchess has powerful allies, including your mm -hmm. Jedi friend Kenobi. I don't like where this is heading. Responsible for our combined strength. We'll be rewarded. Mandalore will be yours, and Kenobi. You're saying what he want to hear, and you still lost the last battle. Don't lie about that. Not that he is, but. Okay, if the Clone Wars is going to explain it to me, then don't worry about um, answering this. But Bo Katan seemed very. I know that, like, from what people have said, Mando, our Mando, Jin, Din Djarin, is descended, or was raised, sorry, by an extreme version of these guys. <laughs> um, an extreme version of the extreme version of um, the Death Watch. But I feel like. Bo-Katan was really dismissive of the Death Watch in general and she kind of seemed to imply that like Armando was a member of the extremist group, the Death Watch, whereas she appears to clearly right now be here in an extremist group so now maybe she's undercover infiltrating it but um yeah I'm confused about that. So if that gets explained then please do. I think watching The Mandalorian first not realizing how much complicated history there was to it all. It's kind of confusing to go backwards and piece it back together again. Oh, well, one last thing before I forget. Um, I, I may have asked this before and I will probably ask this again if I don't get an answer, which is totally okay. Um, the Book of Boba Fett, is that gonna spoil Clone Wars, Rebels, Bad Batch stuff for me? Because obviously I'm gonna finish Clone Wars. Um, I won't finish it by the time the bad, um, Book of Boba Fett comes out. But will that spoil this show and then the other animated shows that came out before it because you know if I haven't finished I, I well hopefully I won't have finished this stuff by the time we get Mandalorian season 3 I'm not gonna wait for that because it's my show I've already started it um but the book of Boba Fett is that gonna spoil things for me just would like to check that dude those droids just gave you an arm and unlike pirates they possess honor <laughs> They know nothing of our intentions. Those revelations mm -hmm. will come too late. Is this linked to the fall of Mandalore? Do they bring it about themselves? This duchess of yours will soon discover. Oh dear. Burden I have a feeling this is going to go quite terribly. I do think that even a peaceful nation should have some kind of a standing army that is largely trained in defense. Oh lord. You're willing to go against all your morals and your traditions and honour to get what you want? I see. I'm just very stressed about where this is heading. Fools. We are not mercenaries. But when I murder you, your army will respond to me. Very well then. Oh lord. What did they think was gonna happen? Holy shit. 
But really, what did they think they were... Oh, okay, we'll leave then. You said no. Show us your supplies. This is a great way to get, you know, loyalty. They're not going to stab you in the back at the first chance they get. The army is weak. We are not ready for the Oh, Duchess. Lord. He is using you, Death Watch dude. There is only one plan. One vision. Mine! Which belongs to Death Watch. Your vision lacks clarity. You are going to be responsible for the fall of your people, I believe. Unless that does just come later. I know nothing about that. I just know that it happens. I have no desire to oppose you. Hmm. We come to join you. Uh, three of you are in danger right now. Oh dear. You've seen these guys before. Oh lord. The ones that are just here by hologram are definitely, you know, sick. Watching this like, oh well, this is mildly inconvenient. Oh. I mean, I don't feel bad about, like, particularly about the huts. It's more just they're building up more and more power and an army, and I'm stressed. I will attempt to finish the Clone Wars for any other references to, like, the Darksaber and Mandalorians before Mandalorian Season 3 comes out, but. We don't have a date yet. Yeah. <laughs> Good boy. Mm hmm. Well, that was a whole lot of death and destruction to be right back where we started. Yes, it definitely wasn't a mistake for the Jedi Council to listen to Palpatine when he said to stop looking for them. Just do what the bounty hunters did and run away if you're just an employee. And the Hutt families have decided to join you. <laughs> oh dear, Mandalore. Then Mandalore and Kenobi are still our priority? They are vital. I'm curious to hear the rest of your plan. Yeah. It's more stupid. Expanded. You will of course. You, Mandalore, and under your protection, I will command a new galactic underworld. Yeah. So much for your honor. Influence is elite. Mobilize the army. Send an advance they both want to try and take the other one out at the end of it all, don't they? Vital to me. I'm stressed. Stay focused. Mandalore will soon be ours, and Maul and his brother will be dead alongside the Mandalore will be no one. This is a very ominous episode, building up their alliances, building up their um well obviously making an alliance with the Death Watch, which I did not see coming. I am always excited to find out more about the Mandalorian culture and the Mandalorian history, because obviously I had seen the Star Wars movies and I enjoyed them, but I wasn't like a super passionate fan. And it was the Mandalorian TV show that really just sold me on the whole package, on the whole universe, if that makes sense. I think it was kind of seeing a more street level version of it than all the high stakes things. And then I, when I rewatched the movies, I enjoyed them more than I had the first time. And maybe I was just in a different headspace. I don't know. So it really was the Mandalorian was the thing that sold me on somebody who used to just be like, I know I like Star Wars, to be someone like, oh, I like Star Wars. And I'm still not a huge expert, I want to know more, but my liking of Star Wars has coincided with my ME chronic pursuit syndrome, memory fog, brain fog stuff. So yes, my memory is not what it was. But that being said, jumping into The Mandalorian first, obviously, um, I, there is a lot I do not know about Mandalore and the history. And, you know, the way it was presented in The Mandalorian, they didn't do the, well, I mean, they didn't necessarily have to, but for someone that, was potentially a completely fresh viewer to Star Wars because The Mandalorian was designed to be a show that, you know, anybody could watch. Though obviously you'd get a lot more out of it if you had the whole wealth of knowledge behind you. I kind of just assumed that Armando was raised in the traditional Mandalorian way and not that it was he was part of not only an extremist group but an extremist version of the extremist group. Um, which is all very interesting to learn and I did talk in the middle about how I'm kind of confused about how Bo-Katan fits in because I felt like she was really dismissive over um, Mando being raised by the Death Watch and saying but she's in the Death Watch but he's in the worst Death Watch and then she's like oh it's my right to rule Mandalore and wield the Darksaber so is she like related to the Duchess Sabine? I think 
I think someone commented that we saw bo in the previous episode that this group were in and I didn't know I didn't recognize her and I think that's just because from what she'd said I was expecting her to be somebody on the planet still though obviously her being into the fighting and having the suit that doesn't quite make sense um so there are lots of things that I'm really excited to learn but it's one of those things where it's almost harder to figure out what's or to kind of understand what's going on when you kind of know some stuff from the end of what happens which I'm guessing that this is going to involve the fall of Mandalore now maybe it will just severely weaken Mandalore ready for it to fall at some point in the future I don't know I just know that it does fall and there are just a few survivors and what's interesting to me is that people seem to view Mandalorians now as like in the wider galaxy as only being the armoured people you know I guess that's because what that's what they were traditionally and then that's the ones that survived I suppose were the ones that um, were the armoured maybe that does mean Death Watch is going to get control of a Mandalore that isn't destroyed for a while and then it will be destroyed later um, it's all really interesting to me to kind of piece it all together and then combining that with Darth Maul and Savage Opress is just <laughs> I did not expect it in the slightest and I really I'm, I'm stressed and like I don't know whether you know I have foreknowledge that Mandalore's gonna fall or whether I'm now being like oh Mandalore's gonna fall and you're all like well no it's actually gonna be ruled by the Death Watch for a while or actually no Sabine's gonna manage to beat the attack because she's got a standing army now I, I don't know um is she gonna manage to get a distress signal off to Obi-Wan on the Jedi Council obviously they want to try and stop that and yeah you know I, like I said, and it's often come up in this show, the concept of pacifism, and I think that is a noble goal. I think ideally every country in the world, in the galaxy, in the universe, should be pacifist. We should all, in our lives, go around with the intention to do no harm. But I think when you're a nation or a planet, you know, like, a, and there are other threats out there, or potential for there to be other threats out there, to protect your people, you really do need to have very, very good defences, and I do think one of those includes a standing army. Um, not an army that you used to go off and invade people, but an army that is ready to defend your home if you get attacked. And from what I've seen on Mandalore, it's very much like, oh no, we're a peaceful people now, we don't do that. Maybe there'll be a little bit of an army, but it just won't be very well organised or something, I will see. But yeah, I I'm stressed about where the next episode is going. I did not see these two plot lines combining in the way they have. And I'm very excited, but also very scared for what comes next. A reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon. You get that two weeks in advance, edited version, one week in advance. And thank you for watching.